You see this woman with some plastic bangles and a red bag? This was a man, not a goddamn woman. It looks more like the LGBTQ and the liberty of gender preference bullshit reached a whole new level. Jesus Christ. You see this extra people? The reflection of light and color on their body was very different compared to the people around them. The edges of their bodies seemed to be very sharp unlike the rest of the people around them. Which means all of these extra pedestrians were added afterwards with the help of green screen effects. Which was not even color graded enough to make them look realistic. It's a very small filmmaking mistake. Look at how many bloody TV channels they have right now. Jesus Christ. It seems more like the satellite TV channels and the OTT platforms took over the whole world. These are called the Royal Bengal Tigers, only and only available in the mangrove forest of Bangladesh named Shundaban. They were very close to getting vanished from the face of the earth by 2060. Jake Sully was wearing a t-shirt from Harley Davidson which is supposed to be a sponsorship. You see the acronyms of the football teams up there? Here is the list of their full names. When this jackass was hitting on the face of his woman, no one was reacting at all. But, this woman in the background was pointing her hands towards that girl and asking her boyfriend to do something. The situation really was is a proof that the ethical values of the future generation became degraded to the worst level possible. When these big guys were throwing off Jake Sully, the guy to the left side slipped on the ground. This is a good example of instant karma. The shoes of Jake Sully were bruised up pretty bad, which really makes sense considering the monetary situation he was in that time. You see that number on the box? These are the numbers of death cases. Jesus Christ, millions of people are dying, and it really makes sense presuming the rise in social exploitation, capitalism, and climate change due to the greed and ignorance of all humans. Also, all the dead bodies were cremated instead of burying them on the ground because of the fact that the earth didn't have enough space for their burial process due to the massive increase in habitation and industrial activities. You see that small bump on the face of Tommy? You can find the same thing on the face of Jake Sully which was a very good consideration while screenwriting. This small detail really helps differentiate Jake Sully from his twin brother. By the way, who the hell is this other guy inside the box in the next frame? He doesn't look like Tommy in any way, not even the hairstyle. Seems like the dead body had an acting schedule somewhere else and James Cameron couldn't manage to keep him inside at the box. The guy with a knife to call Tommy would ever be for the paper in his wallet. This scene really proves that Tommy Sully didn't die in Pandora. He died on Earth after getting stabbed by a bunch of muggers on the street. Which means Tommy had never been to Pandora before. Why did Tommy never support his brother Jake financially? Well, there can be three possibilities behind that. Tommy had no money either because he was also a student pursuing his PhD. He did help his brother with everything he got but he also had his own limitations. He didn't have a solid employment yet. Maybe Tommy would support his brother even more with the money he would get if he had the chance to go to Pandora. Maybe Jake didn't like to get help from his brother because he didn't want to become a burden on someone else's shoulder. And I'm saying that because of the following scene. Don't. Got this. You see the airship over here? The model number is JH-125. This is the exact aircraft which was used in the end of the movie to carry explosives in order to destroy the Tree of Souls. Here we go. Wait, I've also seen this mining machine in real life. I mean, on the internet. Look at the eyes of that bitch. She didn't sleep for days. Look at the face of this bald-headed faggot, by the way. Seems like somebody just pissed on his face. If there is a hell, you might want to go there for some R&R. &R. R&R &R refers to rest and recuperation, which means if you stay in Pandora for some time, you're gonna feel like getting some rest after you die in hell, because hell will appear to be more comfortable to you compared to the environment of Pandora. If you take a look at the screen, you're gonna find out some good details about the environment and timeline of the movie. For example, the local standard time works as a proof that Pandora takes almost 24 hours to rotate once in the orbit. The dates and the months foreshadow that Jake Sully was in Pandora for almost 3 months and the dozers also had a plan to hit the home tree after 3 months, and that is a phenomenal detail. You got three months. That's when the dozers get there. But we're wasting time. You see the small watch on the hand of Jake? You won't get to see that watch again in the next frame. It's because you're not allowed to wear any kind of unrelated electronic gadget inside the link units. Because they use bioelectrical signals to remotely connect with the avatar body. And the presence of any kind of unrelated gadget can create noise or flux in the signals, meaning the avatar bodies can even malfunction because of the lack of sufficient signals. Damn, they got big. Yeah. They fully mature on the flight out. This scene is a proof that it takes 6 years on an average for an avatar body to turn into an adult. This is a very fast process, but not as fast as our public hair grows about our penis. Unobtainium. Because this little grey rock sells for 20 million a kilo. That's the only reason.
Why the hell is that thing so valuable for the RDA? Unobtainium is a superconductor majorly used for the following three reasons. Superluminal communication standing for an extremely fast communication system even faster than the speed of light. Maglev train systems which are like super fast trains using magnets to levitate about the rail tracks without any kind of friction making the train faster than whatever the fuck your father drives to the Home Depot for using a one person coupon discount found on the street which is valid for 69 seconds. Matter and antimatter which are like small opposite particles like a negative positive charge. When the particles get in touch with each other, the friction causes an instant explosion releasing a lot of energy. And unobtainium is used to help control and capture the energy from the explosion so that they can travel faster in the space. There is a reason why this mother managed to reach Pandora within six possible years to suck the hell out of their natural resources by the same token, your ex girlfriend is now sucking the dick of her new sugar daddy. Also commercially available space travel will be too much time consuming without the help of a tremendously fast spaceship. By the way, unobtainium means a precious object which cannot be achieved or excavated, referring to how much valuable it is, but not as valuable as a coupon card is which is yet to be expired. This woman had been researching over there for so many years and she had no idea on exactly what the hell these people were mining from the ground. Is that a benign neglect? It seems like she is a squong too. By the way, this woman looks a lot like my grandma when she was in her 50s, and she was a squong too. Leteri calls me scoun. It means moron. How much link time have you logged? Uh, about 520 hours. That's good. How could Norm have more lock time compared to Jake Sully? This is also his first time visit to Pandora. This guy just locked into his own avatar during their flight to Pandora when the avatar was inside the glass tube. Meaning, Norm only locked into his avatar body but he could not do anything special other than looking around. How much have you logged? Zip. But I read a manual. Why did the bluish toes of Sully move when he was not even connected with the avatar? Is that a filmmaking mistake? Scientifically, the avatar body is a lifeless object without an active neural link with a human driver. It cannot move or function independently and remains inert until it is connected to a human operator through the neural link. Otherwise, the avatar body is nothing but a piece of meat. There is another possibility that the subconscious mind of the avatar can also auto-respond to any kind of discomfort in the body. Provided that the subconscious mind of the avatar doesn't work, when there is no link with the driver, his blood will be clotted and the organs of his body will stop functioning owing to the discontinuation of his bloodstream. That's a gorgeous brain. Nice activity. Why did Max say that Jake had a very gorgeous brain? He was complimenting the extra neuroplasticity visible on the screen over there. Maybe Jake was a retired marine and physically unable, but his brain was not worn out yet. Phase lock 99%, link is stable. Why was the phase lock 99% instead of 100%? That's because Jake was not connected with the avatar using a wire. He was connected with his avatar using a biological wireless network. Which means the avatar body of Jake Sully had its own biological brain and the consciousness of his brain was transmitted wirelessly from the link unit to the body. And I hope you're old enough to know that the wireless connections can never be 100% stable. They performed an air reflection test to check whether the avatar body had any form of hearing problems or not. This one is also done with the animals or not, not with the humans though. Grace? There is a logo of Stanford on the t-shirt of Dr. Grace Augustine. Does it mean that she was a Stanford graduate or she had any kind of involvement with the institution in any way? Definitely. These neural fibers are actually sharp enough to even shred your eyeballs if you get your eyes too close to that thing. Seems like these nasty flies and mosquitoes are everywhere, motherfuckers.